folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. This time is an hysterical and hilarious comedy that came out on August 17, 2001, which leads an all-star cast in a rat race. Yep, the film Rat Race, which is a story about six teams who get involved in a game where they had to race 563 miles from a gorgeous and beautiful Las Vegas casino to Silver City, New Mexico's train station where they actually have a duffel bag full of two million dollars inside a locker room. Yeah. And I remember seeing this film when I rented the VHS tape at Blockbuster Video after hearing a some uh, mixed reviews about this movie mostly because I started seeing trailers and TV spots um, I mean you would imagine seeing another uh, movie that's similar to it's a mad 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 world uh, as well as all the other uh, films that try to be exactly like the same plot where you have the entire all-star cast racing against time in order to get uh, millions of dollars yeah. Well, we did have a lot of ripoffs that came out before this, like movies like Scavenger Hunt that came out in the late 70s, like 1979. And we had a film that was based on a contest from Glad Bads called uh, Million Dollar Mystery, which was a, a completely terrible film. It's more like a commercial than a movie. But it did borrow a lot of plots from It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. But out of all those movies, I thought this one was way better. Mostly because it had a lot of memorable, uh, hilarious scenes that I just never forgot. But unfortunately, this movie is becoming more underrated than ever before. Because there are some people that talk about this film, but not quite. Um, and not only that... This movie hasn't even been on Blu-ray yet. So, this is actually one of the rarest DVDs that I ever found. Which I did, actually, because I bought this at Goodwill recently for only $1.99. However, I got this at a good deal, because it was a red tag discount uh, deal that happened on Tuesday. And when you have those um, different kind of color tags, you can get a 10% uh, a discount. And what do you know? I bought four DVDs. They all cost $1.99 in the discount red tag and went down to, to over $3. It was worth it. But this is a movie uh, I, I would watch um, anytime, even though it's been a while since I've seen this. But I'm just glad I finally own this because th this is an awesome DVD release. It, it has some great extras too, including the the uh, the Jerry and Andy call the actors, where they actually had basically their own commentary by using so, several of the actors who were in this movie, and they they wound up doing a phone call in, and I thought that was clever, and yeah, it had like tons of features for, right here in the back. So yeah. I mean, but it was cool because you get to see uh, actors like uh, Seth Green, Wilbur Atkinson, who plays Mr. Bean. But yeah, this was definitely his second turn after Mr. Bean. I mean, he plays a, a role that's very similar to it. You got John Lovitz, too, and Brickett Meyer, who was in the, the movie uh, Road Trip, also with uh, Amy Smart. And they even have uh, John Cleese and... Uh, Cooper Gooden Jr. You know, this was also the first movie where all three uh, actors had won Academy Awards. Yet they even include Kathy Bates in the movie, who had an uncredited role. Anyway, let's get to the film. It stars Rowan Atkinson, Whoopi Goldberg, Brecken Meyer, John Cleese, Amy Smart, Cooper Gooden Jr., Seth Green, Vince Berloff. John Lovitz, Kathy Jimmy, Lionel Chaplin, 
Dave Thomas, Wayne Knight, with uh, other stars like Paul Rodriguez, Dean Kane, Kathy Bates in an uncredited role, Colleen Camp, Brandy Ledford, and Silas Weir Mitchell, as well as uh, a cameo appearances by Smash Mouth, the band. Yeah, that's what leads to that the ending that I'm I'm gonna discuss after. It's written by Annie Breckman and it's directed by Jerry Zucker, the same director that gave us um, movies like Airplane, The Naked Gun, with his brother David Zucker, and of course he even directed the film Ghost. The movie begins when the eccentric hotel owner of the Venetian Brissot Hotel Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, named Don Sinclair, who's played by John Cleese, had devised a new game to entertain the high rollers who visit his hotel by placing six special tokens, all gold, inside the casino slot machines. And the winners are gathered together and told that two million dollars in cash are hidden inside a duffel bag in a train station locker in Silver City, New Mexico, 563 miles southeast of Las Vegas. Each team is given a key to the locker and told to race across the desert to the train station and claim the money. Knowing to the competitors, Sinclair's wealthy patrons are placing a bet on who are going to win. Yep, and they're all in the background once they watch them uh, race together. So among the racers are, are scheming siblings Dwayne and Blaine Cody, both played by Seth Green and Vince Belouf, businesswoman Merle Jenkins and her estranged mother, Vera, who are both played by Lonnie Chaplin and Whoopi Goldberg, a very disgraced American football referee named Owen Templeton, who's played by Cooper Gooden Jr., the Pear family that's led by their father, Randy, who's played by John Lovitz, an eccentric Italian tourist, Enrico Pellini, who's played by Rowan Algerson, and a no-nonsense Nick Schuffer, who's uh, an attorney, who's played by Brecken Meyer. It also basically focuses on six stories between the six teams, where Dwayne and Blaine managed to destroy a radar with their Ford Bronco, which grounds everybody else, which unfortunately the car actually wrecked into the sabotage, so they wound up stealing another car before they decided to split up the, to double their chances of winning by creating a replica key. So then the locksmith, who was played by Silius Will Mitchell, overhears their plan and decided to make off with the key by trying to escape in a hot air balloon. So the brothers accidentally swerved their vehicle into the monster truck. That was a very funny scene, by the way, because uh, that, that moment alone is when when you saw the monster truck actually going by. And yeah, in slow motion, you can see them actually screaming at each other, trying to escape from it. And yeah, so they, there were some good stunts right there. And I know, they even stole the monster truck uh, afterwards. Yeah, so that way they can continue to go on to, to Silver City. Yeah, I know, because they were getting into a lot of trouble, especially when they went into a uh, into the road with a um, hot chick who's also um, had a lot of piercing. But, of course, even Blaine uh, had his tongue pierced, so that's why he's talking very funny. It, then... Uh, Morell and Burrow had crashed into the car thanks to the malicious road directions that's given by a squirrel saleswoman that's played by Kathy Bates. Yeah, which that means they, they wound up driving into the wrong road and that's where they had all these signs that says, You should have bought a squirrel! And then they went all the way down to a cow piled up where suddenly you see a skeleton showed up holding a bag that says, We love squirrels. 
So then they decided to escape by walking through a lot of miles until they stole a rocket car which races all the way across the desert. Yeah, that was a, <laughs> a funny moment in the movie. And yeah, their faces are like and all swollen up like this. <laughs> but then they run out of fuel and they wind up feeling very dizzy that they end up landing into a bus full of mental patients. Which, of course, they're about to go to Silver City. Then, Owen was left stranded in the desert by a vengeful cab driver who was played by Paul Rodriguez. Who, of course, lost 20000 on his bad call in the football game. He comes across a coach bus filled with lots of Lucy impersonators. This is something you never thought you would see in a movie like this. We have a lot of people dressed up as Lucille Ball. Because they were going to an I Love Lucy convention. Because from what I heard, uh, Jerry Zucker and and Andy Breckman was going to come up with another um, Elvis impersonator joke into this movie. But since that's been done to death, why not have an I Love Lucy convention instead? And it worked. Because, in fact, uh, Jerry Zucker actually casts um, his mother as one of the impersonators. So I thought that was cool. Considering that he did cast his mother in, in several of, of his films, including Airplanes, so that was cool. Yeah, she's no longer with us, though, but I had to say that was kind of sweet. So then he disguised himself as the bus driver in order to get to uh, Silver City, but things just seem to go wrong once the bus hits the cow dangling from the hot air balloon. Yeah, because... You know, Drain and Blaine Cody was just going to go after the locksmith who was stealing the, the hot air balloon just to, just to get there. And then suddenly, a cow actually went by. Yeah, because the cow actually got stuck inside the rope. Um, hanging on the rope. Suddenly, he went into, into the, um, the glass shield on the front. Yeah, you can even hear the, the cow talking. <laughs> saying, help me! Help me! Somebody! I thought that was hilarious, too. <laughs> and suddenly he got so mad after what just happened, because then they crashed into into the side of the road, and and then all the Lucys actually stole the spare tire that they were about to fix, because they were trying to fix it. And then he reveals to himself that he's not the bus driver, so he's now being chased by the entire crowd of, of Lucys. Yeah, they even got an Asian girl playing one of the impersonators. Yeah, hard to believe, like, just to go for the whole, you know, Kung Fu action, or something like that. So then he decided to steal a horse, so that way he can continue to go on to Silver City, and he did. And he also had to steal some more clothes and all that. So then, uh, Randy Pierre deceives his family by accompanying him into the race, but they wound up mistakenly visit to a museum that's dedicated to Claus Barbie, and who was a Nazi. Suddenly the Cody brothers had vandalized their car, and the peers had to steal an Adolf Hitler's uh, staff card to continue to go on. Yeah, and that's where a lot of trouble went in, into the way, because, well, yeah, they started getting all the stuff from, from Hitler's car, such as the harmonica, and the lipstick, and <laughs> he accidentally gave the middle finger to one of the, the the motorcycle riders because of because unfortunately he burned his finger with the, the cigarette lighter, and even worse, he even burned his tongue with the cigarette lighter, and that's why he's talking very funny because once they went straight into the the World War II veterans uh, party in the, in the car. He was actually talking like, uh, which I know they claim to be, he almost sounds a little bit like, you know, Adolf Hitler, because unfortunately that lipstick mess went in, inside um, his, his tip of the mouth, almost looked like he had a mustache, similar to that, so I thought that was hilarious. I mean, yeah, they really did get away with all these jokes, because then one of the veterans actually started shooting them with a shotgun. And they're about to escape. So they're already being chased away. And the family had told Randy that they want to stop the race. But he drugs them with sleeping pills. You know, 
inside the those um, chocolate shakes so they wanted to continue by going inside a semi truck to reach the Silver City now at first Nick chose not to participate in the race until he meets a pilot named Tracy Fawcett who's played by Amy Smart who one of the few had still able to fly by using a non-fix wing helicopter which then he realized she gives them as a large advantage but that's when uh, she decided to pass over to Tracy Borfin's um, house, which his boyfriend is played by Dean Cain. But he spotted him with his ex-girlfriend, and that's what leads to um, powerful enrage for Tracy. So now he decided to attack him by using her helicopter to go straight into the swimming pool. And decided to throw all these parts on his truck. And they just chased him all the way after him. And yeah, that was really messed up. And then then suddenly the helicopter had run out of fuel. Her and Nick decided to steal his truck. And now without a job on the run, Tracy's accompanied Nick to Silver City. And then after that, um, Arinko had fallen asleep at the start of the race, but is awakened for hours. As he tries to rush into the casino, he was he got run over by an ambulance driver, Zach, who's played by Wayne Knight, who was delivering a, a heart transplant to El Paso, Texas. So wishing to avoid trouble, Zach had agreed to take Enrico to Silver City. But it gets even worse because you know Zach decided to show Enrico the the heart. But that's what leads to that because then accidentally just when he was about to put the heart inside the Ziploc bag it flew out of the window and now they had to go after it before the dog decided to to uh, to take the heart which unfortunately <laughs> Enrico accidentally uh, threw the heart just to play fish with the dog and yeah that was by accident and then suddenly the dog was actually electrocuted <laughs> with the heart but Enrico had to escape. Zach touches the electric fence yeah, the one that the dog actually uh, bitten the high bulges uh, French, and retrieved the heart back to life because also Enrico decided to go on the train and he accidentally put the keys um, inside where the baby is but he was trying to get it out so anyway all all six teams together were already racing in time just to get to Silver City so that way they can get the money. Yeah, I know. Uh, even though Enrico came first, the rest just uh, were racing already just to open it up. Now this is the scene where I think it started to bother me even more. But this is a, a really, really pointless scene that I kind of wish this never happened. But when when they all entered inside the Silver City. Um, train station just to get to the locker room in order to get the duffel bag out of there. Suddenly the duffel bag was missing. It was already being taken by Sinclair's assistant Grisham who was played by Dave Thomas and they had a call girl who actually stole the, the duffel bag which he hired and then they also lost it and when the locksmith ties it up to a balloon only three of them crashed their car. And that's when the racers decided to follow the balloon until it lands at, as, as we know it, an outdoor charity concert that was hosted by 90's band Smash Mouth. So now they were all persuaded to give the money to charity, but Nick, of course, was surprised how horrified Sinclair was with his patience that when the number of the entire two million dollars had displayed all the way onto the board and then started to increase that amount of money they just uh, donated. So yet the film ends with the song All Star. Yeah, the same song that's been heard in every single movie including Mystery Man, Shrek, and Inspector Gadget. Yeah, so, and the entire crowd was surfing uh, throughout the entire audience as Sinclair suddenly weeps completely. Oh boy, I, I really hated the ending so much with, with that scene because it was such a pointless, 
and it was really ridiculous. I feel like they just set that up just so they can give away all the money. I mean, I know they wanted to use that as sort of a happy ending, but come on. They've been going through all the trouble just trying to get the $2 million in cash that's, that's in a duffel bag. You know, think about it. With all the costs that they made, they're probably already going to get in trouble anyway. So, what the fuck? All this time, they, they, they try to do this, and then suddenly they, they feel wiped out by giving away all the money to charity just to feed the children. Just like that. I mean, they may have felt good for the charity, but they're probably going to feel a lot worse once they have to pay all the cash that they, that they have done with all the damages. Because, let's face it, I mean, that that's just so fucking ridiculous. Yeah, but you know what? It could have been worse. They could have had some other band uh, take over instead of Smash Mouth. It would have been those stupid boy bands uh, in Stink. And that would be even worse because then I'll hate them even more because of that scene. But I don't hate Smash Mouth. I mean, I, I love several of their songs. And, you know, I, I love Walking on the Sun and... I can't get enough of you, baby, and all this other stuff. And, and of course, All-Star, but, yeah. Now, I'm sorry I gave away that part, but, let's face it, the ending was shitty. I wish they picked a better ending than that. But, you know what? <laughs> it makes the ending of Million Dollar Mystery look good, by comparison, so, what can you do? But, hey, despite of that... I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was very funny, hilarious, and and totally hysterical because I couldn't forget those scenes. I mean, they're, they're just so memorable in any other way. And, yeah, I mean, everything from the, the Lucy impersonators to the rocket car. I mean, and I, I love the cast. I thought they worked so well together. I mean, this is hard to believe that they actually had three Academy Award winners working together in one movie and you got like other actors too a lot of veterans and even some other uh, actors to join in I thought that worked so yeah it, it was perfect but then yeah despite the fact that the movie did have problems <laughs> but they also had some deleted scenes that that's already on the DVD but I thought yeah that maybe they could have put it in but otherwise yeah it will probably be you know, sort of pointless, but that's okay. Like, like for instance, uh, the scene where the Lucy impersonators were chasing Owen around, that they wound up spotting a, a bus full of Ricky Ricardos. I thought that was a clever scene that they should have left in, in the movie. But then I think the movie would be even twice as long. And I don't know, they, they still would have kept it in. And, and then there's other ones, too that I think could have worked, but I don't know. <laughs> That'll take a lot of time. But yeah, the movie had a lot of incredible stunts that they did. I, I know they have used some stunt doubles to do those scenes, even though they must have worked so hard doing them. Um, I, and yeah, if you look at all the behind the scenes, you'll probably see how how they're actually having fun, you know, doing this movie. So they, you can tell that they weren't they weren't cashing in for a paycheck. Like most actors would these days. Because <laughs> I, I don't think Cuba Gooding Jr. Was, was in the film just for a paycheck. I think he was just, he wanted to do this movie, you know, for fun. But I remember they actually had a joke um, on the behind the scenes where John Lovitz was talking to, uh, to Cuba Gooding Jr. about, I guess you won't be able to show the money. Yeah, because that was that famous line from the movie Jerry Maguire. <laughs> yeah. And he says, no, I won't show you the money. <laughs> I love the score that's done by John Perrell with the theme song by Baja Man. Yeah, it even has that, that wonderful opening where they had all the actors, you know, with big heads and small bodies, you know, moving around. That's just like in the cover on the DVD. Yeah, I thought that was cool. And, um, yeah, they, and they... There were a lot of, um, there was actually two versions of that same song, and that also features uh, a chorus um, at the end. But, 
Yeah, and it, and it was like beautifully shot. I mean, it, it actually worked together. You know, having six stories uh, all set up just to get to the, uh, the train station in time in order to get the two million dollars that's hidden inside the duffel bag. Yeah, I thought that was cool. So yeah, um, but it works. I mean, out of its 48 million budget uh, for the film, it actually earned uh, its uh, share at, at the box office, even though it was at number three um, against movies like Rush Hour 2 and and um, American Pie 2. Yeah, it was perfect. But yeah, I would definitely recommend it. So anyway, I give Rat Race four stars. I'm Joseph Asabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.